Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, several hundred years before Christ, there lived in Greece a famous teacher by the name of Aesop. Famous because he had a way of teaching that was, well, unique. He would tell stories, short little stories, we call them fables, usually involving an animal, maybe a couple of animals. And uh, then uh, at the end of the story, he would point out the lesson from the fable. One of my favorites concerns a dispute between a lion and a man. And they're arguing about whether humans are stronger or lions are stronger. The man insists that humans are stronger. And to illustrate his point, he takes the lion to a park and points to a statue of a man ripping apart the jaws of a lion with his bare hands. And the lion looks at the statue and laughs, and he said, that's nothing. The statue was made by a man. And Aesop's point is this, that we human beings tend to represent things not as they really are, but as we would like them to be. In other words, we sometimes color or even twist the truth so that it says what we want it to say rather than what it should say. And some thinkers in the church today, the Christian church and the Catholic church, are scratching their heads and wondering if many Catholics, many Christians, are doing that today when it comes to God. They are concerned that some are distorting the biblical image of God, and they are concerned that they are making God over into the kind of person we want God to be. How do they do that? Well, they do that by stressing those attributes of God that we like and playing down the ones we don't like. For instance, they would stress God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's patience, all of which is valid, but they would also not stress the fact that God is also a just judge to whom we will someday need to give an accounting of our lives. And that brings us to this remarkable parable in today's gospel. I say remarkable because there are very few parables that are so instructive as this one is. First of all, it summarizes the entire biblical story of salvation. Let me 
illustrate that. The vineyard, of course, stands for the people of Israel, as we sang in the responsorial psalm, and as the first reading points out, the vineyard owner is God. The tenant farmers stand for the, well, the people of Israel, the chief priests and the Pharisees, especially whom God put in charge of his people. The servants in the first group, whom the owner sends to the tenant farmers to get his share of the grapes, are the early prophets whom God sent to Israel so that they, Israel would, would, would bear fruit, so to speak. And the servants in the second group are the later prophets. And finally, the owner's son, who was killed by the tenant farmers, obviously is Jesus. The new tenant farmers, to whom the owner leases his vineyard, are the apostles of Jesus, the first leaders of the church. They replace the chief priests and the Pharisees as the new leaders of God's people. And finally, the first leasing of the vineyard refers to the Old Covenant, and the second leasing of the vineyard refers to the New Covenant. And so the parable is a beautiful summary uh, of the entire biblical story of salvation. You might call it the Bible in, in a nutshell, maybe. Besides giving us a capsule summary of the biblical story of salvation, the parable also gives us a capsule summary of the biblical idea of God. It shows us both sides of God, the God who is a patient parent and the God who is a just judge. Like the vineyard owner in the parable, God showed incredible patience with the leaders of Israel. He gave them one opportunity after another over many centuries to change their ways. He sent prophet after prophet. When it became clear, however, that more patience was futile, God passed judgment on them. God held them accountable for their actions. And you see the same thing in that first reading. It reveals a God who shows unlimited patience with his people, but when it became clear that more patience was useless, God passed judgment on them and held them accountable for their actions. And so today's readings show us that God is not only a patient parent who loves us very much, but also a just judge who holds us accountable for our actions. And you note too that because Jesus is the image of God the Father, you see that same thing in Jesus. Jesus reflects those two dimensions of God. Uh, the same compassion as Jesus who said to people, come to me, all you who find life burdensome, and I will give you rest, also said to those who ignored the needy and did not feed the hungry or clothe the naked, depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire. And the same Jesus who said, to people learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. That's the same Jesus who picked up uh, a whip in the temple and in anger drove out the money changers. So we find Jesus reflecting the two dimensions of God, the same as the Father does. Well, what's the application here to our own lives? Well, I think it's clear that um, we need to know that our God is a patient parent. For many years, you know, when I was growing up of a certain, a certain age, certain vintage, um, the, the, the idea of God we got was God was out to punish you. He was, you know, we didn't get the idea that God was a loving father. I'm sure it was there, but it wasn't emphasized. And um, so, sometimes there, there, the, today there might be danger that of the, of the uh, pendulum swinging in the other direction and giving us an equally distorted picture of God. Distorted pictures, though, are not what we need. What we need is truth, and that's what we find in today's readings, the truth about God. He is both a patient parent and a just judge. Amen.